right, so today we're going to start um, talking about discrete math and what that course is going to entail. So let's start with chapter zero, um, which is the first of five chapters we're going to be covering in this course. And this is just um, some introductions and preliminaries. It might be a little bit of a refresher, just to make sure we're all on the same page um, for when we start chapter one. So the first question is, what is discrete mathematics? So discrete, if we look at the word discrete just as an adjective, it means individually separate and distinct. So in this course, what we're going to cover, the subjects are individual and distinct concepts, right? We're going to talk about logic, graph theory, sequences, and combinatorics. So those are our four chapters we're going to cover after this nice little preliminary chapter. So the first thing I want to talk about is mathematical statements. This is going to be really necessary when we cover logic. So the first question is, what is logic? Well, the idea of logical argument was introduced by Aristotle, okay, long, 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 long time ago. And it's a, it was meant to be an appeal to people's reason, okay? Logos in Greek is a word that means word, reason, or plan. It has multiple foundations. It's a foundation not only for current argument, but also a lot of computer science concepts. So that's really important to keep in mind. And this right here, this is Aristotle. So an outline of what I'm going to cover in this section is a statement and truth value, compound statements, variables, and logical connectives. A statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. That's a true statement. The Blues won the Super Bowl. That's false because the Blues are NHL and the Super Bowl is NFL. Okay, no statement is both true and false, ignoring Schrodinger's cat. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Um, so there are some examples of non-statements. Non-statements are neither true nor false. We can't really tell. Um, and that would be something like an opinion, like she is super cute, get your feet off the table, or a question like is today Wednesday. So those are non-statements. Although um, statements are either true or false, never both, we may not have enough information to know its truth value. The truth value of a statement is either going to be true or false. So here's some statements. George Washington was the first president of the United States. This statement is true. The New York Knicks won the NBA basketball championship in 1989. This is false. I had to Google this to double check this, but this is a false statement. The number of atoms in the universe is 10 to the 75th. This statement is either true or false, but we don't know what it is, right? We don't know how many elements are in the universe. At, sorry, atoms are in the universe. We have a rough guess, but we don't know if it's true or false. A compound statement is found by combining, see compound, combine, two statements. We're going to use and, or, not, or if then. A simple statement is a statement that's not made out of compound statements. So here are some examples of compound statements and I broke them up into their simple statements. So the number five is prime and the number eight is even. Our simple statements for this compound statement would be um, the number five is prime, the number eight is even. I could also use an if-then way to combine statements. I said, if Missouri is in the Midwest, then tomatoes are a fruit. Here are two simple statements, both of which are true. But one thing I want to point out is I never said compound statements need to make sense or be completely true or false. I know that seems really strange, um, but we're, we're, we're going to get there. I promise we're going to get there. So when we're working with these simple statements, we want to assign variables to them. And that's necessary in order to develop the rules for logic. So we need to be able to work with any logical statement, not just specific examples. So um, let's denote simple statements using variables, right? We tend to use PQR. So for this example, let's let P stand for the number five is prime. 
we could then say that P, this statement here, has a true truth value. You're going to see that denoted with a T. Um, let R stand for Washington, D.C. as a state. R has the false truth value, just in case. You know, Washington, D.C. is not a state, so we're going to represent that with a F. There are some loud cars out there today, people. Okay, so we can also make compound statements with variables. If I said the number six is even, that's a simple statement, and the number five is odd, we can make a compound statement. So let's let um, P be the number six is even and Q be the number five is odd. So next, we could have Tom Jones does a term paper or takes the final exam. This compound statement is of the form P or Q, where P is Tom Jones does the term paper, and Q is Tom Jones takes the final exam. We can then, given our variables, use logical connectives. So we have this symbol right here that's an upside down V that stands for and, um, a regular V's or, not is a tilde, this is called a tilde, um, and then if then, it, we use this implication symbol, it's an arrow. So um, let's write these compound statements using symbols of our connectives. So if I was to say Fred and Cindy like each other, that would be P and R, because this is a symbol for and or not, right? That's supposed to be a tilde right there. Fred and Cindy dislike each other, that's kind of negating. You know, it's Fred doesn't like Cindy and Cindy doesn't like Fred, so it's not P and not R. Friend likes Cindy or Cindy likes Steve. We aren't sure, so we're going to use this or symbol. And then I have P or not R. So let's write this out. So P is Fred likes Cindy. Fred likes Cindy. And then I have the symbol for or or Cindy does not like, so dislikes, like Cindy does not like, this is where we're negating it, Fred. The arrow uh, represents implication, also called the conditional connective, and it's read P implies R or if then R. It can be read multiple ways. This doesn't really look like the word Fred, does it? Fred. <clears throat> so I want to talk real quickly about tautology and contradiction. So a statement form that has a truth value of true, regardless of the true values of the individual statements, uh, variables it contains, is called a tautology. So this is something that's always true. A statement form that has a truth value of false regardless of the individual statement variables it contains is called a contradiction, and this is always going to be false. So, compound statements with if then. Remember, that's this connected here. So, let's let P and Q um, and determine the logical connective to rewrite the following statement. So, if the train stops in New York, then it does not stop in Washington. So let's let P be the train stops in New York, Q be the train stops in Washington, because we typically like to have our statements be positive. We're gonna ignore that not for now. So this would be P implies, that should not be this, not Q, right? P implies not Q. So if P, then not Q. So here's the truth table for the exclusive or. I meant for this Q to be up here, not down here. So this symbol right here, this circle with um, a cross in it, is called the exclusive or. Okay? This statement of uh, is P and Q or not P. Sorry. This is a statement of P or Q and not P and Q, okay? 
If I have a true value for P and a true value for Q, we're going to get a false. True, true, false. False, true, true. False, false, false. Okay, and it's denoted with this symbol right here. Let's look at some equivalents of P implies Q in English. Uh, we will come back to this in a little bit and make some more truth tables. So there's several ways to read P implies Q in English. So, or P arrow Q, okay? So P implies Q, if then PQ, P only if Q, Q if P, P is sufficient for Q, and Q is a necessary condition for P. We call P our hypothesis and Q our conclusion because one implies the other. The implication P, Q implies P is the converse or the opposite statement of P implies Q. If an implication is true, so if the first direction is true, its converse is not necessarily true. So for example, the converse of the statement x equals negative 6, then x squared equals 36, is if x squared equals 36, then x equals negative 6. But this isn't necessarily true. x could have been 6. So I want to talk about De Morgan's laws. De Morgan's laws allow us to negate statements with and or, or, or connectives, right? Remember, this is and and this is or. The negated version is logically equivalent to the original. So when negation is brought inside of parentheses, it changes um, from uh, and to or or vice versa. Remember when you're multiplying by a negative, when you're working with inequalities, you have to flip the sign? This is kind of similar. So let's apply the Morgan's Laws to negate this sentence. There's water on Mars and Pluto is a planet. So when we negate this sentence, it would be there's water on, there is not water on Mars or, so our and becomes an or, Pluto is not a planet. It is false that Jack and Jill went up the hill. So to negate this, we would say it is true uh, uh, that, uh, so this would be the negation of P and Q. So then we would change this to Jack didn't go up the hill or Jill did not go the hill. So Morgan's Laws are an example of logical equivalence. There are a lot of equivalence laws, which we will be proving later on in the larger section using truth tables. But here they all are. Um, this PowerPoint is posted on our Canvas course, so you can take a look at it.